All right, so at this point, our, our project works in that if you run it in your web browser and you show classes, you see each, uh, each row at a time. This first row up here is our first line right there where we create the whole table and notice that CRN and class and instructor they're automatically bold that's because we uh, marked those as TH table heading so by default they're bold and they're also centered then we've got the next rows right there so that's this whole for statement because we're building we're using the whole for statement to build the row because we've got here tr table row and it goes in to show the first crn value here and then the second one title and the third one instructor that and that and that. So hopefully that makes uh, sense to you. And so we can continue to add more data to the um, to the table. You notice that it's not dynamic in that if I add, let me add class XYZ with instructor Jones, or what class would that be? Uh, math with Jones add class, and it says, okay, class added. But you have to then manually show the classes again. I have, I forgot to say it earlier today, but I'll say it now. Remember what I gave last week in the Z drive? If you go back to the Z drive, I've got there in our class, a simple pouch example. And what we did together manually from scratch is, is right there under simple pouch. Slightly different because some of the variable names might be different and such. But what I've also got is something that I didn't talk about yet. So here's my here's my uh, pre-made example. And I've got a section in there that's commented out. Auto update the table after adding a new class. So the pouch DB has a way to automatically show the latest changes. You don't have to click the ref you know show classes every time. So notice we've got db.info. Uh, so info is a method built into uh, pouch db and then it's also got db dot changes changes is another method and you can check have there been changes we can say since when was the last update so if we've got a brand new updated sequence number then that means we've got new data and if we do have new data if there has been a change on dot on change run show classes so it continues, continually, continuously runs show classes function if there is a change, and change is defined by checking the sequence number. Has there been an update? So we didn't do this together, and we could do it if we want, but that will automatically update it for us. Question? Could we have a, a function for the button add classes at the end of the script for that button? Couldn't we just add the function? Show classes, and then it basically every time you click the add button, it would add the class and then show the classes. That would also work. However, one of the reasons why we have that show that add class is also that it checks if there's errors and such. Now, notice we if there's an error, it'll say error. So it so if if then we also add show classes. Uh, you wouldn't get to see the error because it immediately. It would immediately want to run show classes. 
Okay, we might not have data to show. Now that's a possibility. The other thing is, okay, let's say we do successfully add data. That's good, and then it'll show the class, uh, the, the table. But then we won't get that result that says, you know, class added. Even if we implement this problem, we won't see the class added. Because we are using the same div. Yeah, we're still calling show classes, so it'd be the same div. So to fully get both of those things to work, we would have a div to just show us the message and a div to show us the table. So there's always a there's always ways to fix all of this. So that's why oftentimes I say yes and no, or here's the short answer, but there's the long answer. Uh, so sure, there's many things, many ways to do this. So this um, this is kind of cool. This will automatically update things. So uh, you don't have to do this, but I'm just I want to. I haven't seen it very recently. I'm just curious how it looks. So I'm, you can just copy it as is, and I'll put it in the same place as the other one, db function, and I just copied and pasted. Like I said, you don't. Like I said, you don't have to do it, but I just want to see what it looks like. I'll add a brand new class. As soon as I do add class, it, it displays. So then that makes show class redundant. I add another class. Add class. And I see for a split second, I do see the add classes. And then it goes away right away because I'm repurposing the same div to display the message and to display the table. And then I see there, CRN111. So notice we're showing everything by CRN in ascending order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we've got mixtures there with letters, A, B, C. That's first A, and then C, and then X. Wait a minute, why is H after X? Lowercase. So in computer science and computer languages, um, there is a difference between uppercase A and lowercase A. Because internally, they have different ASCII values. Capital A is 65, and lowercase A is like 97 or something. So they are different characters. So uh, here, it's implemented that uppercase takes precedence, so it's all the things with a capital letter, and then lowercase takes precedence. So then you think, okay, that's interesting, but what if I write like an at symbol? Add class. Put that, I put the at symbol after the numbers, but before the letters, capital <coughs> letters. Yes. You to, to clear everything out? No, how do you delete it? Delete the items in the in the table? Yeah. Uh, I wasn't exactly planning on it. Yeah. I could uh it's just, it's just I could I, I would need a little bit of time to set up that lesson, but okay. obviously uh, prop people are probably thinking about that. Yeah, I'm adding stuff to the database, how do I remove it? So I think uh, I I need a little bit of setup uh, because I need to go and refer back to pouch and to see how to remove items and all of that. I guess it depends on whether you're trying to just clear out your te testing values uh, from a development standpoint, or if you're trying to give the user an interface to uh, delete things. Exactly. Because if you're just trying to do it from a development standpoint, then you just do it from the uh, console. The yeah. Yeah, so if we just want to clear it out, let me show you how to clear it out from the web browser, but to program it to let the user click, you know, delete my class, that'll need more setup. Let me show you this. So if you do want to clear stuff out on your database in, uh, in Chrome here, uh, you want to do the inspect element. You go to the resources tab, not the, not the uh, sources, but the resources. And then go to index DB. And you can go by sequence, and then you've got a little X, clear object store. So that still shows it there, I suppose. 
show classes. Yeah, so um, you can go into the database itself, clear it out. Obviously, this is just for us developers. The regular user is is not. Actually, the regular user would be able to do this, but the regular user would most likely not know how to do this. We would want a button in our app that says, you know, delete classes. But then you think, okay, do you want to delete all of them, or do you just want to delete class one, two, three? So again, that requires all of that algorithm to set up in the code. So let me look into it and we'll see perhaps to implement that. Yes? Let me add another one here. Uh, perhaps we can just select it and then click the X. So I do have one item, and I'm going to look at by sequence and refresh, and I'm going to select that one item. It doesn't exa exactly look like I'm selecting it. No. Yes, that makes sense. Let me add two records. doesn't want to behave. So um, maybe, maybe it'll, it'll let you delete one item at a time, but um, I know that in the console we should be able to write a command here also to perhaps clear out individual items, but again, uh, this is why we take for granted that all of the software works and we get mad when there's errors. But the thing is that we, someone has to beta test this, or a group of people have to beta test this, and get into all possible scenarios. And when you're the only developer, well, that's a pretty daunting task. So when we get to the point, which is in part three of the class, when we're getting closer to release our project, we can actually set up a beta test pool with, uh, with Google Play. We can put up our app and let certain people download and test our app and give us feedback, and perhaps help us squash these bugs. So, this is to be continued. Some other stuff and uh, and delete some of the store was still there. Um, Just go through all of them, delete them out. Are they document store? Yeah. yeah. And clear out of there and report. Yeah, I got the same error message you were just given. And once I cleared all of that out and then reload the page up, and that's when I work again. Okay. Sometimes that um, you need to do that because. This is the good and the bad of it in that we wanted a way to, to permanently store our data and here it is. And then sometimes we you know, kind of trip over ourselves because uh, testing this stuff, well, we're going to need to feed it data and then just quickly I want to type 1, 2, 3, but we've already got a record called 1, 2, 3, so to deal with that. Yeah, so sometimes you have to do a few things just to wake it up. But I think uh, a faster way we could have also done is it knows that this data in this file comes from that file. And I think if we rename our file, we can create another instance. 
So I'm going to work with my pouch copy. I'm going to run that. In Chrome. No, it still loaded that up. I think the key there is that you pulled with the same database the same name. Database. Same database name, yes. Because you'd really want that if you want to start looking at it for multiple browsers and, uh, and multiple devices. Yeah, and then when we get to the point of it being in the cloud and to replicate to it, that's true. So uh, if you do want to then kind of test it and start over, all you really need to do is on line 7, make a new database name. That'll give you a brand new database to play with. STCE classes 02. Some of the browsers are really good at letting you do a reset like Safari. I think that's the, I don't know how it affects the database. But. So now in my resources I've got here, you've got Pouch STC classes and Pouch STC classes 2. And that's a brand new database that we can start playing with. So that's one kind of kludge to be able to kind of test on a brand new database from scratch. Just give it a new database name. Remember, if you're, if you're testing in Chrome, how much space do you have to create PouchDBs? As much as your hard drive has. So. so that part right there about the auto update is kind of cool, but I'm not going to leave it as a final implementation unless you want it. That's fine. I'll just leave it up to that point. What about the uh, remote couch? Uh, this one up here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is related to... Right here, we've ex in my example, I've explicitly said there will be no remote couch. We don't have a server, we don't have cloud infrastructure to save to. Um, it's often better to be explicit about something. Uh, we didn't do it on ours. But notice on my example, there's a variable that says remote couch, and it's false. Uh, so we're not using any cloud infrastructure. If we did want cloud infrastructure, we put true, and then we use, we use that elsewhere in the script. So obviously there's still many things we can do with this. We can do, for example, um, error checking the type of data. Maybe I only want numbers, not letters. Notice my example is able to accept any kind of data. You know, CRN1, 1, one, and also 111. It can, ex it can get anything, anything. You might want to set it up that you only get um, numbers, but that would require setting up, for example, checking a regular expression. What kind of data are we collecting? And maybe give us an error if it's the wrong data, or strip out the wrong data. Again, this is that information architecture, IA. Information architecture is how are you going to set up this project? What kind of data are you going to deal with? What are you going to how are you going to deal with it if you get bad data? What do you define as bad data? You know, uh, you probably see this when you fill out applications online. Is please put your phone number, and a lot of people put you know the the area code in the parentheses and then the the three numbers in the dash. And then what's happening internally is that those values are being stripped out because the database won't accept it, just the numbers. If that requires that setup. Yes. Um notice here three digits, four digits. It goes, you know column by column. So 1 is less than 6 is less than 9. So if I had 1, 1, A, it would look at the 1, and then the 1, and then the A. So it's going to put it in an, in an order. I can't exactly tell you what is the order, um, but it'll be alphabetical based on its own internal rules. If you wanted a different order, I was about to look at over here under the PouchDB API, 
we can go look at all docs, which is under batch fetch, under all docs right here. So we did um, there's descending. And we have other ways to display the data, include docs, include the document itself in each row, otherwise by default you only get the ID and revision, etc. So, uh, also, this, we can pull the data out of the database and it has a simple ordering system, but we can of course continue to build a for statement and other ways in JavaScript to show the data however we want, using our own ordering that is not built into the pouch API. Yeah. Well, we, we could also, in our script, we could change everything they type to uppercase. Yeah. Even if they type small letters, they would capitalize. Exactly. We have some JavaScript method that will take any lowercase text and then make it uppercase. Um, you know, we've got those transforms that we can do in JavaScript. So this will this can give us the raw data, and it works for this simple purpose here. But then, of course, we have the full control if we look at more uh, features of uh, and more methods in, in JavaScript. So when we talk about deleting, here we have how to delete something. Delete a document, db.remove, which particular document and then various options. Well, notice the example here, db.remove. Notice they had to first get a document, then you can remove it. Error. Positive response. So we have to identify a particular document to remove, and we were doing it by data i. So we'd have to do something like that in that we need to know what particular document are we working with? Because we're going to feed it a bunch of documents, and we need to know which of those to delete, either one at a time or all of them, so perhaps a for statement could be added. Anyway, so any other general questions at this point? Obviously there's still a lot to do, but at this point I feel we've learned enough of this to try to implement this to our actual app. This is a good proof of concept. It's just a web page. Should I want to add this to my app? I want this feature to my app. So any general questions at this point?